G'day. Matu Karu, Naranon King, Wimmer Ni Nerpa, Nergul Thurgul, Landa Bundi Mara. G'day, my name's Ken Jones, I'm a proud Bundik elder from the Limestone Coast area around Mount Gambia to Port Macdonald, and the Grand Pins up towards the Kurong. I'd like to tell you one of our uh, stories, our family story, in fact, about our bottlenose dolphins. We have a long history of association with the Bowendick people and dolphins. One of our stories describes the accountable the whale was speared and wounded. He escaped back into the sea, gasping and breathing mist through the hole in the back of his neck. Our dolphins were similar and all warm-blooded gave birth to live young underwater. They nudged up as young fellas and they survived with their mum. Actually, we still coach and call dolphins in close to shore, whistling and clapping underwater. This long-term association was engaging and sharing of Tommy Ruffs thrown up on the sandy beach, scared by the dolphins. Active, healthy families, our bottlenose. They're often seen fishing in a family group or playing, surfing or migrating in huge mobs, travelling east. Well organised, they hunt the mullet, salmon, squid, cuttlefish and shellfish in shallow waters. Of course they have to watch out for predators including white pointer sharks, orca killer whales, fishermen's guns, harpoons and fishnets. Dolphins swim with tuna, mackerel, salmon and barracuda, sharing the pilchards and anchovies and baitfish. Also mutton birds, albatross, petrels and gulls all join in the travelling circus with sea lions and even leatherback turtles. The dolphins using echolocating sonar, they can dive to great depths in darkness of dirty water. But sometimes can become beached due to confused return signals. Once they're beached, they're in a lot of trouble. During these strandings or near misses, we get to know more about these amazing animals, the dolphins and the whales. A fresh dead whale or a dolphin on the beach was a time for Bowendick celebration, dance and ceremony, and more quality red meat that could be used by a small group was sensibly shared with family, friends and neighbours. Sometimes even enemies agreed to share. Smoke signals and bull roars. <laughs> was a message sticks also told of the newfound bounty. Our fresh beach whale was butchered with flint knives and the dark red meat cooked on coals or hot rocks. The oily blubber was used as a medicinal fat. We actually have the beach whale song and it's sung usually when we're dancing around in the shallows for many many years this song has been handed down verbally Wathana Yangana Kantapul Wathana Kantapul has come Yangana Kantapul Kantapul has landed Wathana Yangana Kantapul Wathana Yangana He exhaled hot, steamy breath. Yay! Celebration of the bounty. Long time ago, one windy day, some young warriors ran back to their elders, having seen a big white duck outside the surf line of the breakers. The old fellas explained, with that big white duck come ashore and those little black ants jumped off, we would be badly stung and surely die. Later, they would suffer 
several of these landings. The first American whalers to inflict a lot of trouble for our people, stealing and raping the women and young girls, shooting all resisting angry braves, trading iron axes and knives for favours and fresh water. Smallpox, colds and flu were soon spread wide. Within 30 years, deadly uninvited virus and disease had wiped out most of our Bowendick people. Separated from their loved ones, sick with fever, cold and shivering, severe depression, isolation and hunted like kangaroos, they could rally no resistance. Sickness today. We have a better understanding now in 2020 of experienced isolation. Fear of deadly sickness, no hunting or gathering, separation from our loved ones, definite boundaries and banned from speaking our language. No easy communication was allowed, similar to now. No song and dance, no bush foods or access to proper medicines. Bowendick people had to rely on government handouts, rations of tea, sugar, tobacco and grog to dull the pain. There were poison creeks and waterholes, strychnine and steel man traps hidden in the flower, soggy blankets generously handed out to the sick, riddled with smallpox virus. Domestic violence, hoarding, stealing, infighting and little hope for the future. Yet the Bowendick survived another 200 years. Ancient gum trees, the casts are there in flint, as a reminder. Don't steal from your boss. Salt water turns trees to stone. And it's a bit like today. We need to look after our country. So this story has been told for many thousands of years and we still tell it now as a reminder for caring for country. So it sounds like a lot of your stories are to emphasise uh, principles about things like caring for country and caring for each other and respecting each other and that that uh, either negates or contributes to the health of the land and the community and each other. Yeah, that's right, Wayne. Uh, it's pretty obvious that over many thousands of years that probably the most important uh, outcome was to care for country because our country is our mother. Uh, we come into the, uh, the country and we, we drink from her, we, we feed from her food and we're nurtured. And if we didn't care for our mother, well, we would have been extinct many thousands of years ago. We've learned that one of the most important things the basic beginning is to respect our ancestral grounds where we live and that could be the, the red hills or the, the limestone coast the lakes the trees the clouds the wind that we respect where we live and how our ancestors hadn't destroyed it in the past so we've in some ways we've inherited a, a lovely bountiful country that's where we talk about respecting our elders, how they've looked after it, and we also, at the same time, we respect the fact that our country is, is a great blessing. The Aboriginal people see great solitude and comfort in, in just going for a walk on the beach or <clears throat> regaining some of their connection with friends and family and, um, and a new realisation that we all need to respect our country and uh, uh, sort of celebrate our spirituality and connect with our, our ancient past. And so just briefly to go back with what I talk about um, 
the four pillars of Aboriginal society, in particular where we live, we um, respect our ancestors, we respect the old ways and the old country. We um, celebrate our spirituality, which includes taking on the spirit of the animals that we have found or have hunted. When we actually do the hunting, that's uh, with great respect to our prey, well, what we're going to collect. And that could even be from a mushroom to a gum tree to a, a kangaroo, with great respect. And that's caring for country category. That, that's where we really do love our mother and we only take from our mother what she allows us. The dance and ceremony is a very, very important part. That's the celebration of the fact that we've been able to collect from our, our mother. So the, the dance and uh, ceremony is very, very important because that goes around the full circle again. If we've done the dance and ceremony three weeks ago and we're due to go and find an, another crayfish, we would remember that we achieved with great reverence and um, happiness that we did get crayfish three weeks ago and we could probably have a very good chance of doing that again provided yeah. we follow the rules where we uh, respect our elders and our ancestral lands we uh, do our hunting in a sustainable method and then of course we can have our food and our song and dance family makeup is very very reliant in aboriginal culture to respect our children and our mother. Because we've chosen to ignore those old rules, it's now showing up with mental wellbeing, with sugar diabetes, there's uh, alcoholism, there's family violence, and most detrimental health effects to our um, Aboriginal people now, of, of all ages, is due to the fact that we are starting to become lazy and we've ignored those old rules where we, we no longer hunt and gather as we should. We no longer care for country and it's showing up in um, uh, kidney disease, lung disease, blood disorders. So I think we're a prime example. Aboriginal people are like the canary in the, in the coal mine. It's, it's showing up very quickly on our different age at death. So we, we're dying basically 20 years younger than uh, Europeans. And a lot of the reason is because of ignoring our proper healthy hunting and gathering. The next part of uh, our important connection with where we live is to celebrate our spirituality. Mm. So spirituality could be, once again, it could be the clouds, it could be the smell of sea breeze carrying the, the seaweed aromas or the garfish or the crabs. On certain days here where we live, when the wind changes from the north and it goes off the sea, living nearby we, we get this spiritual visit and most of us say, oh, wow, isn't that beautiful? A mm. cool change. <laughs> but hey, can you smell the crabs? Yeah. Can you smell the crayfish? And we listen. We, we can hear a, a change in the, the audio. Birds. Our magpie's got a lovely name. He's called Tuwol. You see the word written down. It doesn't mean much, but Tuwol, pronounced correctly. Tuwol, 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 Tuwol. A magpie, he talks to us. Mm. The woolly wagtail, as we said earlier. Chatter, chatter, chatter. He's our message bird. So we're listening, smelling, feeling, touching, believing. Smoke. Smoke is a very important part of our, our makeup. Could be for sorry business, could be for a wedding, could be for a christening or a birth. A connection with aromas and smoke remembering too that some of our ancestors went to Gallipoli and posted in the envelope was gum leaves before they jumped out the trench they got their cigarette lighter out and lit up the eucalypt leaves I find it very emotional to think about the last connection that our Aboriginal men and our Aussie men too the last memories they have was their spiritual connection mm. with the gum leaf burning We actually practice slow time. We all need to slow down. 
Mm. Maybe you've just got off a plane or maybe you've, the dogs ate your homework or you've had a flat tire or the kids are driving you mad. How about we just slow down? So Dijira is a, a fabulous way for everybody on this planet to slow down and just walk with the reeds and the rushes mm. and just go with the flow. Don't, don't worry about bouncing off rocks. Just go with the flow. Mm. Makes a lot of sense. I have people travel from all over the world to come and visit us at the limestone coast. Sometimes they come with all sorts of worries and stresses. So we'll go to a place like this, and we'll sit down with our feet in the sand, and just let nature do its thing. Often I'll say to people, imagine you're at this very beach, or your sandy river bank, just listen to the birds, or listen to the sea. Imagine you're an air mattress. Close your eyes, reach down with your imaginary hand, and you pull the plug out of your right big toe. the air out of that part of the air matters. Do likewise with your left toe. Tweak that plug. Your right thumb. Your left hand thumb. With a bit of luck, you won't be able to move for a little while now. Relax your neck, relax your shoulders. Pull the plug out of the top of your head. Let that go. Let the steam out. Let down your tyres. Earlobes. Let all that tension out. I think one of the most important ones is your chin. Pull that plug out of your chin and let your jaw go all sloppy like. Let that jaw relax. Sometimes you may see clouds with your eyes closed. You may, if you're lucky, see a little purple intrusion in there. If you can find that little purple cloud, see if you can work on it and expand it. It's into that purple cloud that you may be able to fly as a wedge-tailed eagle or a pelican or an albatross. You may be a stingray. I often travel down the Kurong or a river or along the beach in my meditations. As you go, you may have some visitation from loved ones of the past that have left us. I often do. You glide down through it. And you could stay there as long as you like. I'm looking after myself in this precious time. When you're ready, you slowly crawl out. Don't pump those tyres up too tight though, just come out of it gently. Open your eyes and have a look around. And you're probably prepared for almost anything that may come along. Enjoy this conference and practice Dijira when you can at slow time. Now open your eyes and enjoy our friends and family. Thank you so much, Ken.